All right, welcome everybody to our next talk. This is the last one in the content delivery track, um, and it should be a good one. Uh, cash and validation by, by Taylor. Take it away. Great. Thanks, Dave. Get my screen shared here. Uh, I believe we can all see the uh, presentation here. Yes. So, <laughs> great. Um, as Dave alluded to, this talk is going to be on content and validation. Uh, we have a differentiation between the terms refresh and refetch. I'm glad everybody here is able to join me. I'm sure most of you, if not all, are aware of this quote. Uh, there are two hard problems in computer science, cache and validation, naming things, and off by one errors. Uh, these uh, witty lines of humor often contain some truth, and we're going to dive into that just a little bit today. My name's Taylor Fry. I'll sometimes throw my middle initial in there to differentiate myself from a Broadway actor with the same name. I'm a senior software engineer at Comcast working on the CDN team. Uh, at Comcast, we obviously utilize and contribute to the open source projects, and here today we're obviously talking about Apache Traffic Control. Um, I've got about 10 years of varied development experience from mobile apps to desktop applications to web and server development and uh, even throw in some management there. So we're going to start pretty high level and hopefully tunnel down uh, to the crux of the issue. Um, and we'll get begin with uh, why cache, like why even use cache? Um, as mentioned in the quote, cache and validation is hard. but we wanna make sure that we understand exactly what we're trying to solve with caching before we start figuring out what the problems are. So some of the benefits of caching are fast access. Um, we're, we're removing the physical distance between users and a resource. Um, content obviously can travel across the globe and as fast as that is, uh, it still takes time. So we can reduce a lot of that uh, latency with caching. And the caching isn't just in the website. Obviously, we have it down all the way down to the CPU and all the way up to the servers. So uh, the other primary reason for caching is to reduce resource usage. We don't need to recompute values. We don't need to send the same picture across the internet over and over again. Uh, we can store it locally or intermediate areas and try and reduce some of that load on the servers and the system in general. Um, but what makes caching hard? Uh, naming things in cache and validation actually suffer from the same problem. Naming is tough as well. And the, the reason why is we're trying to guess the future. Uh, we can't predict whether this name will work to someone else somewhere later down the line. And we can't determine exactly how to cache things in the future as well. Well, one solution might be just store everything. Well, we can't do that. There's a finite amount of storage available uh, for all the content being generated all the time. It's just not possible. And then coupled with our space constraint is the time constraint. So if we can't store it forever, how long should we store it for? Uh, how long do we know until it gets replaced? How long do we know that it's valid for? And we're starting to understand why cache and validation itself is actually difficult. Well, uh, like most things we solve, we solve it with a standard. Uh, <laughs> so we, as a community, as a collective, came up with RFC 7234. Uh, it's agreed upon way to define the limits of caching for both the client and the server in HTTP. Um, it's the currently preferred mechanism for determining these rules, and it's primarily the cache control header. This uh, replaces the Pragma and Expires header. And while these are still in use, and even sometimes recommended by OWASP, uh, the cache control header will take precedence. So the cache control header uh, can be included in either request or responses from the server or the client, um, giving both of them control over storage and freshness of a resource and, and dictating various times and things like that. These instructions are called directives. So we'll see stuff like max age, no store, must revalidate. And these directives are not just honored by the client and server, but also by intermediate proxies as well. Uh, over on the, on the right side, you can see that the 
cache control header is specified for a request to the IANA organization. Um, it's saying that it's public and that its max age should be one hour. Uh, as I mentioned, there are other headers at play beyond the cache control, whether it was pragma or expires. Um, there's age, uh, e tag. Some of these have been used in conjunction with each other. Some of these have been replaced by each other. Um, often these are conditional. So we'll see uh, e tag used kind of like a hash to determine whether a resource has changed or not. Um, it can also help with mid error collision detection and things like that. Um, mostly this is just to show that, the, that this problem is trying to be solved with quite a few uh, different, very particular um, uh, definitions, I guess I should say. So, so we've got the agreements and the standards to cache and how to agree to that. So how do we deal with guessing the future? How do we revalidate? So uh, let's see here, how does this work? What happens if a server changes a brand logo, wants all the clients to get a new look, or if a client wants to check and see if there's a new headline on a news site? Well, the server can run a cache control directive called must revalidate, but this doesn't actually perform a revalidation or a validation check. All it does is tell the client or the cache, I guess I should say, that if the resource is considered stale and no longer fresh, that it can then check, but it cannot check until the resource is stale. Um, again, with e tag or an ending combination with if match or if none match, we can, we can also check with the server to see if things have changed. Uh, and also with these various date fields. The problem is we still aren't checking with the server until the resource is stale. There's, there's no point to recheck. That's why we agreed that it'll last for an hour, for example. Uh, the same holds true for caching proxies. Uh, as we recall, they are required and must follow and abide by the directive set by cache control and these other headers. If the resource is not yet considered stale, the caching proxies will continue to serve the client or the content that they have as is without checking with the server. However, we can, do, we can perform an actual validation request. So while waiting, uh, it, it, while continuing to serve the fresh objects, once we know that they're stale, once the caching proxies know that they're stale, we issue a validation request. We send either a get or a head, and we're trying to query with the server if something has changed. Uh, you'll typically see this done with a head request because we're only concerned primarily with the status code of 304, that the content itself has not been modified and that we can continue to serve what we have as a fresh resource. So this is all good so far, uh, except this approach is dependent upon automatic time resolution. So we've agreed upon expiration dates or durations, um, but there's no way at any point still beyond that to trigger something to happen. So imagine a scenario where an origin server has changed its content, it's changed the logo, it's changed the headline. Um, and this content is critical and it must be delivered to the clients as updated. Waiting for the expiration of cache timers might be too long. And fortunately, we already have a mechanism in place in traffic control and in conjunction with traffic server to provide the solution. We call this invalidation requests and these can be created through traffic portal. Uh, traffic portal is a component of traffic control. These invalidation requests, known as jobs in the API, are regular expressions for an origin's resource. The traffic control cache config utility, T3C, uh, is detailed by Rob Butts in an earlier talk, queries and parses these jobs, and creates a configuration, va uh, configuration uh, file, excuse me, such that Apache's traffic server can consume this list. ATS, Apache Traffic Server, can then mark these resources as stale and ignoring current timestamps, expiration, and ages can then query the server for a 304, try and see if the, the object has changed. So we've given ourselves the ability to do a manual revalidation with this feature already. Uh, just to recap, we're, we're saying that we want this resource to be considered stale 
whether it is or isn't, and we want Apache Traffic Server or our caching proxy to see if that's still the case. And now we're down to the crux of the issue. We thought we've solved it, but we haven't quite gotten there. So what if an origin server has updated the resources, we've marked it as stale, and we're querying the, re and we're querying the origin server again for the header values to see if we get a 304? Well, what happens if we actually get a 304? <laughs> But the content has changed. So we now have a misconfigured origin or a misconfigured parent server returning incorrect values for resources that have changed. Well, this is the point of the talk, the fix. Um, up to this point, I've really only talked about the words stale and fresh. Uh, and in the beginning, we saw that we're talking about refresh versus refetch. So what is the difference? Well, stale is a resource that needs to be refreshed. It is out of date. Um, however, that is assuming we've seen this resource on the caching proxy or within the CDN as a whole. Uh, until that time, it's considered a miss. The first time we try and query a resource, we haven't seen it before. It's a miss. We know we need to go to the origin server and get a copy of that. Refetch is this manual revalidation version of a miss. So what we're doing here is we've modified the invalidation requests in traffic ops to accept a request type of either refresh or refetch. And while this field is required, the default behavior is still gonna be refresh. These requests are saved in traffic ops T3C will periodically query and the jobs endpoint will translate the difference between refresh and stale and refetch and miss. And all of this is done so that ATS can appropriately manually validate the resource. So where do we stand on implementing this feature? Oh, let's see, we've created a blueprint. We've, we've sent it out to the mailing list. We've got agreement on the proposal um, and the feedback of what we're gonna do going forward. There's currently a pull request 6118 that is up and getting reviewed. Um, and within that pull request, we've modified the database schema. We've changed the data. Um, we've dropped a couple of tables. We're trying to clean up and minimize some of the baggage and overhead that we've been carrying along with these jobs but I've only been using them as invalidation requests. Uh, we've modified the Traffic Ops API endpoint to handle this new data schema and to provide us the new functionality. We've modified the Go clients that are utilizing the API to continue to be backwards compatible um, as is the API with previous versions. And uh, they will also going forward be able to handle the new jobs endpoints. We've modified T3C to account for these changes and the, the libraries that are shared between this and the Go clients. And we've modified the tests around this, these areas that were impacted by the changes. Uh, the work that we have remaining is we need to update the documentation in the PR so that it makes sense for those moving forward. And we uh, know what the API differences are. And then we need to take advantage of this in the traffic portal UI. Right now, the traffic portal UI is working off of a stable API, so none of this is available. Um, but we just need to make some tweaks and changes there. And then finally, this was originally targeted for the v, v4.0 of the traffic ops API. Um, however, that is currently going through a re release cycle for ATC as a whole. So this will likely get ticked up to a higher version. Uh, it's just one more thing that we need to take care of is all. So that said, uh, let's do a quick demo, show a little bit of what's going on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna launch a local version of Traffic Ops. And before we dive into that too much, I wanna show uh, what the data schema changes have been. So hopefully we can see this. Um, this is currently what's out in the releases as they stand now. Uh, you'll see we've got various columns and uh, some foreign key constraints to the job user and job status tables. The new job schema is reduced by quite a bit. 
Oh, oh excuse me. I misspoke on the, the foreign key constraints on the previous one. Uh, yeah, status and user. So uh, status is no longer here. The table is gone. Uh, same with the user call, or excuse me, the what, what key is it? Um, the agent, that's the one I keep missing. The agent is the one that's, that's no longer there. Uh, we've modified some of the column types, TTL hours instead of parameters. Um, the asset URL will remain the same, but the key here is the invalidation type uh, with a def default of refresh. So that is the, the new column, the one that we're gonna be mostly concerned with. So now that we have got traffic ops up and running, we'll just show a little bit of the API usage. This is the default stuff for development. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a job. Uh, we'll do it uh, with 24 hours time to live. We'll make it a refresh job for test delivery service. Um, all good, responded. Let's make another one just so we can see a difference here. We'll do 29 hours and see which jobs we have. Both of the jobs are here, both are refresh. This is all looking good. So let's go ahead and take one of those ones that we just created actually. We'll do uh, ID two and we'll update the time to live to 37 hours. Uh, all looking good. This functionality still is the same as it was before, just that the data structures of the JSON table have changed. Now let's try and do refetch instead of refresh. Invalidation type refresh is, dis oh, we need to change that. There's a bug. Should be saying refetch is disallowed. Uh, what is happening here is we have added a check for adding the refetch capability. And one of the things that I'll touch on a little bit later is we just wanna be very careful when we create a refetch request. So to do this, we need to effectively allow ourselves the ability to add refetch jobs. And this is done by creating a global parameter called refetch enabled and setting its value. So we're gonna go ahead and insert this value here Let's see here. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's see if it exists now. Excellent. We can see that the value is true. We've now added it. Now let's try and update this one from refresh to refetch. And it went through. We can now see the refetch job is there. Make sure that we still have both of them. Yep, refresh and refetch. So that's all good and well, uh, but the next step then is we've got these things existing in traffic control that are queryable by the jobs endpoint. What will happen now is periodically T3C is going to query these job endpoints and see if there is a change. If the change exists, how do we propagate that to the appropriate server caches? Uh, there is a regex revalidate plugin in ATS. What this does is it queries traffic ops, or excuse me, T3C will query traffic ops, create the config file. This config file is used by this regex revalidate plugin in ATS. And this plugin is gonna look at that config value. It's gonna determine whether something is a miss or it is stale. So that's that translation between refresh and refetch and stale and miss. And what you'll see as, a, as an example of this file is something like this. Um, the resource, the expiration as, a, as an epoch seconds time. And then since this 
functionality existed before refetch and misses, the default will still have either stale or a missing value outright. And then for the other content, it will be considered a miss. And this will trigger the uh, caching proxy to go query uh, for the resource outright. All right, so all that said, Uh, the one last thing I wanted to touch on is a word of caution. Uh, this word of caution is that this is inherently an inefficient operation. So we are ignoring RFCs. We are deciding that we're going to go outside of the standards in this particular case because we need the manual control to revalidate content. Uh, but the very fact that whether we have the content or not, we're going to force ourselves to go get new content. So we must be careful and purposeful when doing this so that we don't accidentally go query resources that we have that is current and is considered fresh um, and, and without just constantly pulling down these resources and, and sort of getting rid of one of those primary reasons we do caching to begin with. Um, the other thing is, is that this is done with a regular expression. So we wanna also be careful that we don't uh, accidentally wipe a large chunk of information that's being cached and then re-pull all of that information down. So these, these two things in combination are the reason why we default to refresh over refetch, um, why we default to stale instead of miss. So this is th these are the, also the reasons why we added that global parameter as a final check. It's not to say that we don't need this feature. We obviously do, but we just need to be careful when we use it. So that's pretty much all I've got. Um, I am a, quite a bit ahead of time. So if there's anything I can do to answer questions around this, uh, that would be great. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, that's a good question, Zach. If this isn't covered by any existing RFCs, is there any merit in submitting a new RFC for it? Uh, I'm, excuse me, certainly willing, and I think we maybe we want to pursue that idea of submitting a new RFC for something along those lines. Uh, the W3C working group uh, can certainly review it and decide if this is any merit or if this is something that we, we want to pursue. So it's the same as the community that can provide feedback. I've never actually gone down that route or even looked into it. So I'd have to spend some time seeing what all is required to go down that route. So certainly not something that we wanna, we wanna ignore or, or discourage, just uh, I haven't pursued it yet. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.